Okay, here we go. Uh, today we're going to look at the ideal gas law. Um, the ideal gas law is a combination of all the various gas laws that we've looked at so far. Uh, what we've looked at is uh, Boyle's law, which deals with pressure and volume, and that's equal to some constant. We looked at um, Charles' law, which was volume and temperature, which was also equal to some other constant. We'll put a two here to say that it's a different constant than the first one. We also looked at Avogadro's law, which looked at the fact that volume and moles are connected to a third constant. All right, so what I can do is I can take these three equations, and it's kind of tricky to do, but what I can do here is I can actually cut and paste these equations together. This isn't a very, uh, very mathematical way to do this, but it pretty much kind of shows you what, what I'm going to do to combine these equations together. I can bring this over here, put my volumes together, and I can do the same thing over here, and I can bring this equation over and bring my volume here. Actually, let me move the n over. All right, and when I do this, I can put all of these variables together in one equation. Well, the volume would go here and n would be. Well, you can see that I put them together. So I got what I have by doing all of this is I'm going to convert and change it to PV over NT, which is equal to the combination of all three of these constants, which would be a new constant, which we're going to label with a capital R. Uh, capital R is what's known as a universal gas constant, and that's where I get this equation here, which I can then bring the n and the t over here algebraically to you know, multiply both sides and bring the n and the t over to this side, which makes it PV equals nRT, which is the more familiar version of this equation. Okay, So what it does is a connection between all of the various gas laws that we have, pressure, volume, n, r, and t. Okay, so we've seen that there are four variables, pressure, volume, moles, and the temperature. And this equation here puts them all together in one fancy equation. This is the best equation out of all the various gas law equations we've seen because you can get Boyle's law, Charles law, Avogadro's law, and any other various gas law that you need. Now, before we go into that, though, we need to talk about the universal gas constant, and that's what this R is. R is what's known as a universal gas constant because if you plug in your pressure, your volume, your moles, and your temperature, you're going to get the same number each and every time. So what happens is if your pressure changes, one of the other three variables has to change in order to keep this value constant. So if my temperature goes up, then either the pressure has to go up or the volume has to go up. Right? We know that. We know that if we increase temperature, then pressure and the temperature have to go up. Either they both can go up or one or the other can go up depending on what you're doing. All right? If I increase the number of moles, then the number of the pressure should go up or the volume should go up depending on uh, Boyle's, or sorry, depending on Avogadro's law and what would be called Dalton's law a little bit later. So you can see there's a connection between all these variables. So one of these has to give so that we always come back to what's called the universal gas constant. What is the universal gas constant? Here it is right here. There's two different values because your units can change. You can either use this in atmospheres and liters. That would be pressure, atmosphere, volume in liters. Obviously N is in moles and your temperature is in Kelvin. Or if you did this in kilopascal, which is another typical value for R, uh, the, the idea is that if you change the unit, you change the magnitude of R. It's not changing the value of R necessarily in the sense that it's a different constant. It's just that the unit is different, just like you have you know, one atmosphere is the same as 760 tor. It's not the different, it's a different number, but it's not a different magnitude or measurement. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, this is the one that I would use most often. I would, if I were you, I would focus on this one here. This is the one that's the most useful for you, is this one here. You're going to see this 0 0.08206. Why is this one better than the one over here? Because most problems are going to be in atmospheres and liters and in, well, moles and Kelvin, obviously. But most of these problems are in, in atmospheres rather than kilopascal. So it's your choice on which one you want to use. All right. Uh, what I want to show you is just a way to um, how to use PV equals nRT, and then I'm going to show you in the next video how to calculate with PV equals nRT. So what would I do if I were to use PV equals nRT? How would I derive each of the various gas laws? So if I have PV equals nRT, all right, what I do is I list the information from the problem. So let's say based on the problem that the variables that are changing, variables that change are, <clears throat> oops, probably should put the word change in here, would be, let's say, 
volume, and temperature. Okay, so you should know this is Charles Law. Hopefully you remember that as Charles Law. And you can memorize the equation, and you know it's this uh, over this is equal to 2 over 2. Okay, great. Hopefully you remember that. If not, what you can do is you can use this equation to derive that information. So how do I get that out of this? What I do is I look at this equation and I ask myself, what variables are changing? Which variables are constant? So which ones are constant are going to be my pressure and the moles. So what I do is I come over here and I cross off pressure and I cross off moles. What else is constant? R. So I remove those from the equation. What I have left is volume over and temperature. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring the temperature over to this side by dividing both sides by the temperature. So I divide this by temperature and this by temperature. What I end up with is volume over temperature is equal to pretty much 1. Now Again, what I want to do now is a little trick is I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and mimic this side over here. Just repeat it and put twos and there you go. Voila, I have, I don't know why I said voila, I don't normally say that, but anyway, I have Charles Law. Okay, and I can get any law that I need to from this information. So let's say that we change, instead of uh, volume, let's say we change the pressure temperature and pressure. We didn't really talk about that. So pressure isn't going to stay constant. We're going to keep constant this time as volume. So again, PV equals NRT. What I need to do is which ones are staying constant? Well, in this case, volume and moles are staying constant. And of course, universal gas constant is also staying constant. So just my pressure and my temperature are remaining constant. So what I do is I bring everything over to the left side. Always bring it to the left side. You could bring it to the right. It's not really going to matter. It's just not going to match a lot of the equations I use. But it doesn't matter because it's a ratio. It's a proportion of this to this. It doesn't matter if it's volume to temperature or temperature to volume. So anyway, I'm going to divide. I'm going to have pressure and temperature. Divide both sides by temperature. This cancels out. So what I have left is pressure over temperature, set it equal to itself, and put a little 2 on this side, and you have what's referred to as Gilles-Sachs Law. Now you don't have to memorize that name or know that name. You should know Charles Law and you should know Boyle's Law by name, but that's the only two. Okay. So by using PV equals NRT, you can derive any of the gas laws that you need. You're going to see me doing this quite a bit. So again, if you don't want to use this and you don't want to memorize, you know, you don't want to try to derive the equations, then memorize them all. All right, but I'm not gonna, you know, expect you to, you know, memorize them when you can derive them all from this general equation. All right, so in the next video, I'll show you some calculations with PV equals NRT, and uh, we'll take it from there. So thanks a lot, guys.